Hey guys, welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. Uh, today I'm going to be letting you guys in on a kind of tradition that I started honestly way before we ever did YouTube. And that tradition is when Jessica travels out of town for a weekend, uh, for work, um, but usually for more than just like a day, uh, I try and do something special for her while she's gone. Now it doesn't happen every time, but I have been fairly consistent on just picking out a project or something that would be helpful to her to come home to. Um, just as a saying, thank you for everything that you're doing, especially when she's on work trips. A couple of the projects that I've worked on over the years is like the pergola and the little garden out front of the house here. Um, that was one thing that I worked on while she was gone last year. Uh, but then also, you know, many years ago before Ben was born, uh, there was a trip that she was traveling over the weekend to a ministry conference where she was one of the speakers. And while she was gone, I ended up redoing kind of like in a cosmetic way, our master bedroom back in Arkansas. You know, around that time, we were getting pretty close to actually Ben being born. I think the conference was like beginning of February and he was born obviously the beginning of March. But while she was gone, I redid the room because she had mentioned how much she didn't want to bring Ben home uh, to that room. And it was pretty bad, I'm not gonna lie. It was like really ugly pink walls with like gross forest green wallpaper borders and I mean it was just a bad um, we just hadn't had a chance to address it we had to focus on so much other stuff when we first moved in so while she was gone I redid the room built our bed our king size bed that we use and some other stuff and so she came home she came home to like a fully cleaned and remodeled room um, so it's just this you know just kind of sharing you know, like the tradition of of doing nice things for Jessica while she's uh, away so that brings us to today um, today we're going to do something that I hope will be meaningful. It's definitely something she's asked for uh, in the past, but at a, like in Arkansas. Um, she's mentioned it a few times, but never been like, hey, will you do this? Like, will you definitely do it? You know, because if she had, I would have already done it by now. Uh, I've just kind of paid attention over the last few months because I feel like it's become something that would really help her and uh, make her feel good just about the situation she's in right now. You know, with Jessica's uh, health issues being what it is, uh, the eczema flare-ups and everything that's connected to that, you know, she's started on this uh, journey of just getting uh, whole, uh, completely healthy from top to bottom, inside out. It's not just addressing symptoms. You know, we've really started down a path of just getting to the bottom of why all this stuff is happening and just believing that as we go through this process that she will find complete health and wholeness uh, on the other side. You know, with eczema flare-ups, uh, they have, she has good days and bad days, but you just never know what's going to cause it. You know, when it was warmer outside, you know, at the end of summer when it first started, and you know, she starts sweating, it'd get a lot worse. And then she'd go and rest and it would kind of, you know, calm down. She also noticed that there are different fabrics that would irritate it more or flare it up more than others. And so she started making some wardrobe changes. Um, she started buying linen stuff, uh, non-synthetic fibers, things like that. And if you've noticed, she's been wearing a lot of uh, linen dresses lately, which I realize I may be a little biased, but I think that they look fantastic. I really love the, the style she's in. I mean, I also love every style that she's ever had. You know, every time it changes, I just, I, I love all the things about Jessica. Anyways, enough about that mushy stuff. Let's get back on target. All right, so the linen dresses. Uh, here's one of the big hurdles that Jessica has been dealing with on making that switch. You can't put them in the dryer because it shrinks them. And so she's been having to air dry them. And what that means for us is, and for her, is that she's got these dresses and different things that can't be thrown in the dryer. So she hangs them up on hangers and they're like balancing on like the trim of our doorways around our bedroom and our bathroom and in our closet. And they get knocked down and you have to like dodge stuff when you're trying to get in and get something. Um, so I've decided today that we're gonna do a special project for Jess while she's gone. And I'm gonna finally put in a clothesline for her here in South Carolina. Now we had talked about it earlier, you know, before she actually made this jump about doing one but we kind of like we're like well should we do one here at this house even though we're not going to be staying here you know long term should we just wait and do one at the house when we build it and you know that's kind of where i was at about six months ago like let's just wait and we'll do it down there because i know that she's always wanted one but she never actually needed one she just liked the idea of it um so i was just like can we just wait and do that when we get the house built well obviously we haven't started building the house yet so that's kind of like you know a little ways off and then secondly uh now she's got this this dress issue that you know we really need a place for her to be able to dry them so i'm just going to go ahead and put one in here 
and then we'll do another one whenever we build our house and that's okay all right so I'm, i've got all the equipment and materials i think it's behind me yeah i've got all my tools on the four-wheeler i think i've thought everything through i shouldn't have to run and go get anything but you never know but i've got all the tools here i've got the six by six treated posts that we're going to build it with sitting over there i've got some concrete on a pallet with the tractor and i went ahead and got the skid steer with the auger i'm just gonna do like a couple of holes it's gonna be self-explanatory but i'll do my best you know probably over explaining it um, but for starters we need to get some string and i'm gonna run a string between these two fences and make sure that the posts kind of are straight um, it doesn't necessarily matter if they're squared with the fence um, you just want to make sure that the posts are in line so whenever you mount the uh, the top piece and string your line that it's not like at some kind of weird angle or anything like that um, not going to be too particular about it, just going to string the line, make a couple of marks. Well, you know, when this started, I was talking about, I think I thought everything through and got everything I needed. Well, I ran into my first, uh, I forgot. So I've got the holes dug, ended up going with 30 feet. Um, as I was laying it out, just kind of like looking at the distance, kind of imagining how many articles on each side you can hang up um, this is what i went with i think it'll be plenty it's not too big it's not too small it's gonna be just right however the thing i forgot sorry got sidetracked uh post hole digger so the auger comes in and digs a good hole but just the nature of it it drops a lot of dirt back in the hole um, like this see so that's a two foot hole but about half of it's full of loose dirt and the other side will be the same way um, so i've got to go grab some post hole diggers and clean that out um, i'm actually going to put the dirt in this tub and move it over to this hole that the dogs dug in the backyard um, especially because we're going to be putting this clothesline up here it's close enough that i don't want jessica to fall on it and twist an ankle um, you know honestly with that, this much land you know no one actually spends a lot of time in the backyard so i haven't ever addressed it but since i've got the dirt now i'm gonna go ahead and fill that in Okay, so one thing that I definitely have to consider, and if you're doing this uh, yourself or doing it for your, your wife, you got to consider how tall they are. Um, I'm not going to build it to my uh, reach because that would be outside of where Jessica would feel comfortable doing that. I don't want her to have to bring out a ladder or a step stool. Uh, you don't want it too close to the ground. You don't want stuff touching, um, but you don't want it too high. So in doing the math, I was uh, figuring for eight foot, six by sixes, I'm gonna put two foot in the ground. That'll give me uh, six foot out of the ground. And then, you know, I'm gonna be putting like a five and a half inch six by six on top, but then the line will kind of rest in the middle of that. And just based off of like, not just my uh, reach, but where I know Jessica's reach is, um, that should be right where it should be. However, I ran into my second problem I guess whenever they were loading out the lumber, they gave me 10 foot six by sixes instead of eights, which is, I was like looking at this like, man, that is at least two foot taller than me and it's two foot on the ground. Obviously it's 10 foot cause I'm six foot tall. So I'm gonna have to cut uh, 24 inches off of both of the ones going in the ground. And then I'm gonna take the uh, other 10 foot and cut somewhere around I think I'm gonna do I think I was planning on doing like a four foot wide uh, T to go on top um, I may change that once I kind of put four feet on top and just kind of see how far apart it is um, but that's kind of what I was thinking uh, since I can't set these yet I'm gonna go ahead and get my uh, timber frame saw hooked up which is this massive skill saw that I got for whenever we finally get started on my shop the blade on this saw is big enough to cut through an eight by eight uh, solid all the way through without having to flip it over and cut a second cut. Um, so the blade on that is 16, it's 16 and something inches uh, from end to end on the blade. It's just, it's a massive saw, um, but it can get a clean cut on up to an eight by eight. I haven't used it yet because I haven't needed to. So I'm gonna go ahead and try it out on the six by sixes so I can get nice clean edges. Um, I don't have to worry about things being little cattywampus from yeah, I don't know if you guys have ever cut posts off before and you can't get all the way through it. So you got to cut a second cut on the backside and then it doesn't line up right. And then it's like got like a, it's out of level. It's just, I don't want to do that. I want clean edges for this. It's got to look perfect. 
So we're gonna get out the mega saw. All right, before I drop these in, I went ahead and made another measurement and marked at 24 inches. So that way, when I set it in the hole, I have a line that I can use to gauge how far down it is. This is not gonna sit level. The ground is sloping, it's, but it's gonna be level with the ground. So if I set it level on the far end, it'll be too high for her to reach. So that way I'm gonna mark it at 24 and, my, and make sure it's, it's set at ground level on this end. And then again, down there. And that way the slope stays the same and it'll look better that way. I'm gonna go ahead and set up my, uh, my bracing and get ready to level it. And then I'll screw it all together once it's all level and in the ground and then we'll drop some concrete in there. That is a lot easier to do, I'm remembering now, with two people. But I got it in, it's on the line where it's supposed to be, and it's straight up and down, perfectly level. Six by sixes are heavy. So in case y'all don't know, when you're bracing a post, um, you put something in the ground and then you run a board up to the post and then you secure it with a screw or something, something you can take off later after the concrete sets up. That way you can set it in place uh, while you get the concrete in and let the concrete set um, so the post doesn't get jostled out uh, place and get out of uh, level and all that stuff. So what I did there is I actually secured the stakes first and screwed that into the, into the boards. And then when I actually got it level and screwed it into my post, it actually twisted the post. And so I was having a hard time with only having two hands uh, getting all that uh, situated. So um, what I'm gonna do this time, and it, uh, I kind of figured that out afterwards, is I'm actually going to secure the boards to the post first and essentially level uh, the beam by using the boards against the ground to just kind of hold it uh, in, in level. It won't hold it permanently. And then once I get that, I'll drive the stakes where those, the edge of those boards are and then double check it and screw it in. So I'm basically gonna do it backwards since I'm here by myself. Now, if I had help, uh, you'd have someone hold the beam and someone else could set the stakes once it's all set up. But there's always a way to do something if you're short hands. This is taking me a little bit longer than I was anticipating, which is usually the case with me. I always think I can get things done faster. Um, it didn't help that uh, also the fact that I'm here by myself means that yeah, I've got the kids asking me for all their little questions, which, you know, they're only going to ask it for so long. So, uh, you know, had to stop considerably to, to help get snacks and break up a fight about superpowers and all kinds of other stuff. So anyways, kind of running out of time, sun setting behind me. Well, good morning, guys. Uh, welcome back. Uh, looks like the concrete set up nicely. Let's check it out just below the ground level so I can cover it up with dirt. Um, so now we're just gonna start assembling the top. Uh, as I was saying yesterday, I was thinking somewhere between four and five feet, but I kind of held up the tape measure, um, just kind of like to test out you know, what those two different measurements would look like on top. And I felt like four feet was sufficient. On the six by six, which is actually only five and a half inches wide, we'll get into dimensional lumber and rough cut lumber another day. Um, but a six by six is actually a five and a half by five and a half. Uh, at the top of the post, I made a two and three quarters inch mark, which is essentially the dead center of that six by six. And I'm gonna make a mark here uh, at two feet. And if I line those two marks up, then the center of this is on the center of that. This may be a little bit of an overkill decision, but I am gonna run uh, two lag bolts that are uh, eight inches. Yeah, they're eight inches long uh, through the top here. So I'm going to have to pre-drill those holes. My markings on top to, and I'm going to pre-drill those holes and then we're going to set it up there and get it locked in and then we'll add all the hardware. Okay, it's up there, marks are lined up. Now I'm going to try and keep it lined up while we put these uh, lock bolts to the top. All right, some of that hardware I was talking about is the Simpson Strong Tie stuff. Uh, they come up with a, just a variety of different brackets and lag bolts uh, some of them are painted black for more decorative use and a lot of them are just uh, galvanized metal i've used them on a ton of different stuff uh, rafter uh, hangers and all kinds of stuff so the stuff i'm using for this is a t that's kind of decorative it's black it's got some cool edges 
Um, that's gonna go one on each side. It attaches with these, um, and you can pick your size. I did a three and a half inches, so that way I could do one on each side and they wouldn't connect. And then they also make these like offset, really heavy duty washers, which isn't really necessary for functionality, but it looks really cool. And you know me, I like the, the finish details. Uh, add a little something to even just a clothesline. So uh, this is all stuff I got at Lowe's. Home Depot sells it also. Uh, it's Simpson strong tie stuff. All right, another piece of hardware I'm gonna add. And again, this might be overkill, but I've seen other clotheslines. I've built a clothesline before. And as the wood dries out and gets rained on and it dries out, you know, it starts to twist and lose its rigidity as far as like you know it'll be super sturdy today but i'm trying to make this where i don't have to come back and fix it um we can put you know as much on the line as we want without having to worry about uh, messing it up and so one thing i am going to add is this uh 90 bracket underneath the arm here i think i'm mostly going to do that not because i feel like we're going to be putting so much weight that it needs this but i'm hoping that with these long lag screws and this bracket, it'll help keep it from twisting as much um, and kind of breaking loose. All right, let's go over uh, the design of how I think I'm gonna assemble this. So eyelet goes into the six by six on top. I've got these pulleys um, for this rope, which will actually be the line. It's the right size to fit through this. Now the pulleys have to stay uh, horizontal so the line can feed through and go to the next pulley. So if I eliminate the uh, piece that would attach these two and I was like well how can I attach these two because this is like a perfect size hole for this size eyelet however this is like bent closed and there's no way to get that up in there like like it is um, but I feel like it would be best if I could just permanently attach this to this eyelet without having to have a go-between I'm gonna stick these in the vise at the tool trailer and I'm gonna basically just bend it open an eighth of an inch slide this up and then bend it back and because i'm going to do that uh, the eyelet will actually have to mount vertical so that this can stay sideways all right so i did get this attached all i did was just increase this spacing right here um, by locking this in a vise and essentially just working this back and forth while pulling up and it gave me enough space to be able to slide these in like i thought it's perfect size this is going to be real simple easy to fix and adjust All right, got all my hardware on, um, both sides. Because this is a pulley system, it's gonna be essentially a loop. It goes all the way around and connects. That's what those connectors are for. You know, it's funny, I was uh, reading something and it was just kind of like, just different bits of information from historical stuff. And I said in like the 19, late 70s, this guy put out an ad in all the major magazines like Sears and different things, the catalogs that people used to order stuff out of, advertising a solar powered uh, dryer and people were buying it for like 50 bucks so in the 70s that's a lot more money than you know 50 bucks now uh, and but essentially what he sent them was a clothesline kit and some clothesline clips and I'm assuming that people weren't super happy about it but if I remember reading the article right he uh, didn't get in any kind of trouble because it's ex it did exactly what he said it was. He didn't specify that it was something more special than that. So just thought it was interesting. You know, I'm doing this after reading that like last week sometime. So that was funny. All right, back to work. Okay, I've got my line run. So I fed it, fed it through, went down, fed through, and then came back. So that's this end. So I think I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna tie this end off to the eyelet here. And now I'm gonna pull through real tight on this end. And that way it'll pull back on this knot. Um, and as I pull this tight, I'll get it where I want it and go ahead and secure it to the other side, um, which will then keep it tight. And then once that's done, I should be able to just cut off the tip that's tied there and it should be good. At least that's the way it's working in my mind. Also, I've noticed that I made another miscalculation which happens sometimes you know you try and plan and think things through but I guess I thought this was a 200 foot roll of rope um, I know they had them but I must have grabbed a like a hundred foot because I'm not gonna have enough to run essentially 60 feet it's 30 feet down 30 feet back 
uh, per side. So I'm gonna have to go grab another 100 foot roll of this rope to be able to run the other side. But I'm gonna go ahead and get this one up, test it. I'll, I'll come back probably tomorrow and get the other side up. All right, first attempt at getting it tight enough. I don't think I got it tight enough. So I'm gonna tie it back off and really pull on it this time and try and get it a lot tighter. So there's the hardware with the burned ends that kind of melts and seals it off so it doesn't fray on the pulley. All right, so hang stuff on the outsides and take the inside and essentially you would pull, no, you push, push it away. Technically I'm running this backwards because you know you'd want to do it the opposite way. But anyways, works like it's supposed to. You know, clothes would hang on this side. Uh, that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, I feel like I got it as tight as I can. Uh, I might have to come back out and make some adjustments after she's hung some clothes on it a few times. Um, but that's okay. That's kind of why I did it the way I did. So so I can fine tune it uh, as she starts using it and some things change, maybe some other ideas. Uh, I think that's pretty much it other than coming back when I get some more rope and uh, finishing up that other side. Uh, so now I'll just wait and see what Jessica thinks about it. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this one. Uh, thanks for coming and uh, helping me uh, fulfill another tradition of ours here at Roots and Refuge. And our, like I said, I hope Jessica is going to enjoy it and get a lot of use out of it until I build her another one over at our future home whenever we get to go on that project. So thank you for hanging out with me. I bless you. Until next time.